In Louisiana, Governor Jeff Landry calls for a crime special session of the Louisiana legislature. What could it change? We go into depth on the details. In Florida, a father fights off the attempted abduction of his child. And a fight breaks out at a Long Island basketball game. And Mike's got the details on that. These stories and more coming at you today. Valentine's Day. Valentine. Woody's favorite holiday. Not mine. Wednesday, February 14th on Real Life Real Crime Daily. And I'm Jim Chapman. And I'm Woody Everton. And I'm Mike Agavino. Happy V Day, boys. V D Day. V D Day. Try try not to make that so. It may indeed be that for some people. Happy V D Day for all you suckers who go out there and do this man made holiday. (laughs) Give your lady roses and shit all year long. You don't have to wait until this one day. Be a true romantic like Woody. It's also. The 89th birthday of my father-in-law, Jerry Lawman, up in Jackson, Happy birthday, Mississippi. Mr. Jerry. Happy 89. birthday, Jerry. So is he named Jerry after, Miss Jerry Ann after him? Well, my wife will kill me for this, but her parents had gotten divorced. Oh, there you go. And dad is Jerry and mom is Ann. Oh, and so they, named... they sort of hooked up while they were divorced. Well, that happens, I guess. Oh, and your wife is going to get you. Along came Jerry Ann. There, you there go. went Mike's there you Valentine's Day got, loving. No, she, <laughs> she's a child of love, man. She brought them back together. They've been back another 50 something years after How they remarried. So, isn't that special? Lots of good yeah. came from that. A, we got to put, we got to, we got to put this. Super Bowl stuff to bed. Oh yeah, so uh, man and Jim just schooled us again. No man, we were t- it was a three way tie, mm-hmm. and then so we needed. We I know needed, I our game went to overtime. Anthem guy crying. I saw the one guy. Yeah, and I was like yes, yeah. and then I saw that skinny chick. Like we got Taylor, we got times. Taylor Swift skinny on the chick. over. She was like nine times instead of five and a half, which was a big bet I won uh, uh, over the over the. Uh, over the weekend with some real money, not uh, what we're doing. Um, but uh, but there was a lot of other stuff that didn't happen. We don't know if there's 120,000 uh, beers sold or not yet. They're still counting beers. But uh, Yeah, but we all had the same bet on that. So Yeah, no, it's it's Jim wins because Jim picked Jim the Chiefs. ran the freaking table. Oh, picked the, picked the freaking Won Chiefs. Every Mahomes Chiefs stole the game again. killed me all year, man. They killed me again. The 49ers <laughs> controlled the game the most of the game. They and did? They just didn't put enough points on the board to, I watched it. to prevent him from beating them. Why the hell did they pick? To take the ball in overtime. That was just know. ridiculous. I don't, I don't know where the hell that came from. And who the hell picked Usher to do the halftime Oh, show? he did a great job. That I was thought, awful. I thought he did a great I think job. He's so old, we should do a poll. We should do a poll the, on the Facebook the, page. The, dance, I, the dancing was great. The singing was terrible. It was awful. I was pulling shit off the pit. Cooking was for smart. myself. Was a smarter move. This first thing, this first Super Bowl I ever watched, totally by myself. Yeah. They, I guess they don't. They don't do an alternative Sometimes thing. Sometimes it's nicer that way. Wow. <laughs> Didn't they used to do an alternative thing for halftime? Like yeah, a puppy it, bowl no, or no, something? What, or a, Beavis and Butthead uh, you always had a halftime special. Yeah. That's but I don't think there's an alternative anymore because I, 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 I want it out as soon as that thing. Is, if Alicia Keys has a great voice. If she sounds like shit, you know something is really bad in what they've set up. Yeah. And they should have been auto tuned. I, I don't. Just I don't didn't know. sound. I'm in depression mode. Football's over for another year. No, yeah. no, awesome. we got the merger of the leagues. Come on, uh, uh, that's bullshit. The they, Rock they is do, behind this. This they is do the that real every deal. Year, the it's always bullshit. The Rock doesn't back losers. I'll be watching NASCAR. The yeah. Rock doesn't back losers. <laughs> yeah, no one's gonna watch. The Rock it. says he doesn't back losers. It's so funny because you're gonna go from. I mean, this game will come back. I haven't seen the numbers yet, but it will be the most watched Super Bowl in history because of Taylor Swift. Okay. Let's get us to true crime time for <laughs> no, Valentine's I, I had one Day. more thing. Oh. Super Bowl. Okay, just one more thing. Best ad. I didn't uh, watch them. You don't I, watch I, I got up and just checked it on the pit. That. The one with uh, Ben Affleck and... The Dunkin' Donuts. Yes. I saw that on that Google and didn't go back and watch it yet. It was pretty good. Only because yeah. only they had Jenny from the block in it, but I, that's the only reason. Yeah, I that was to good, watch. too. I, I, I thought you would, I thought you would vote good. for that because they did have your girlfriend in it. It was really funny. But uh, USA Today has this panel of 60,000 people who vote on the ads every year, and they come out. And that ad got second, and they gave the Arnold, uh, uh, whatever insurance company, 
Arnold was doing. I saw part of that on State Farm. Was that the one? State, State Farm. Yeah, that same. was a good one. That, okay, but I don't think it was better than the Duncan Donuts. Better. And they had the one with the UFC. Dana White was in it, and some other people. I didn't even that was a pretty good one too. It was, was a Bud Light commercial. I was I was up getting myself a beer. But, Bud Light commercial. Yeah, man, and they had a lot of them on that show. Yeah, they didn't. Do, they didn't. A score, lot of they didn't score stories. well. Yeah. The worst score. The worst scoring out of the whole thing in this thing. Was the uh, RFK Jr. ad, which is hysterical because he he stole a 1960 John F. Kennedy ad and well, was packed it yeah, and threw it in there. Funny. That yeah. was bad. But they also had and and then we'll move on, Woody. But this Jeez. is important. The, Prime time. The most uh, the 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 top Super Bowl ad of all time. Which the 2013 Budweiser Clydesdale ad, where the guy raises the. The Clydesdale from a colt mm-hmm. up, that. and then it, the the dog becomes part of the regular mm-hmm. Clydesdale chain, and the guy goes up to Chicago to see him, and you know the the dog uh, the dog the horse has the blinders on, but then the guy is going to his car, and the dog comes running down the street. Mm-hmm. And the dog, I keep saying, dog. the Clydesdale comes running down the street after him, and they hug. I, I, you can't watch that ad and not cry. Yeah, I don't know. People either. <laughs> People either like go Spuds, for, Spuds for that one or, or the, or the Bud Bowls. Yeah. With the, or Mean Joe Green, where Mean Joe Green yeah, throws the, the kid coke. the shirt, yeah. the, the Coke ad. And All right, football season's <laughs> over. Let's get us true crime Sorry, time. folks, I know you asked Wednesday, me to do at least 20 minutes on over. Super Bowl ads, and these guys aren't letting me. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Love all y'all. Let's roll. All right. Uh, look, changes, they are a- coming to the state of Louisiana. We've been mm-hmm. telling you about this since Governor Jeff Landry was elected, and he has called for a special session focused completely on crime. Uh, on February 8th, he called the Louisiana legislature to convene for that special session focused on tackling issues of crime that are plaguing the state and, in his opinion, and many others, holding us back. Throughout this session, the legislature will create laws to strengthen the criminal justice system and repeal soft on crime policies that enable criminals to hurt the community. So we're going to go through real quick the items that are on this. Uh, it's actually, I find it very interesting, some of these that uh, a lot of people have been wanting to see changed for a while. Uh, the first item one is to restrict parole eligibility, uh, something in the state of Louisiana that a lot of people think uh, has been too loose is the parole uh, options. In, in, it's become too loose. Yeah, it's become too loose, and so that is something they're going to talk about and look at changing. Uh, item two is to restrict or repeal the earning rate of good time or diminution of sentence for good behavior and earn compliance for, for credits. Which I don't know if, if y'all don't know that is uh, for every day you serve, you get a day off your sentence if you. So it's like a one for one. Yeah, if you don't, don't misbehave. And so they're looking to restrict or repeal that. Mm-hmm. Uh, to require a unanimous vote of the parole board to grant parole and increase the powers of the board. How about that? I, I agree with that because right now it's just, it's a majority. Uh, to require electronic access to criminal records and certain records from juvenile delinquency proceedings. Mm, I agree with that, too, because the juveniles are so much more violent now, most of them being tried as, a, as an adult, uh, even the ones that are – let's say 16 or whatever, and they're trying them as an adult, they've, they've been doing it since they were 10 years old. They might have a murder on their thing, and, and, but it's the, it's, the case is locked up. Yeah. They were juveniles. Yeah, very Fuck good them. point. I mean, it, it's, if there's anything, it's a good prediction of what you, kind of shithead you're going to be is what you did when you were really young. I agree with that. Uh, to increase the penalties for the crimes of carjacking. Uh, that's about time. Yeah, and that's something that I has been a uh, major uptick in the state. It, it's not going to deter. There's no such thing as a true deterrent for crime. But you know what? That same asshole won't be back out carjacking. Let me tell you this real quick. I had a guy on a cell block. Uh, he was juvenile. He got juvenile life, which was up to 21 at the time. When, when he was 18, they moved him from juvenile prison to uh, D.C. I was at, and he was from New Orleans. And I asked him, I said, 
he's, he's about to get out on his 21st birthday. And I was pretty cool with him, you know, as I was most of them. And I said, I said, you, we called him juvenile. I said, you, what you going to do when you get out? He said, I'm going to do the same shit. And Come I, on. I, he was in for carjacking. And then I said, what you going to do different? He said, I'm going to kill him this time because uh, uh, dead people can't testify against me. And guess what? He went out two months and he carjacked two people and he shot them both and one of them lived. Now he's doing life in bloody Angola. Wow. Uh, to lower the age of a person deemed to be a child for the purposes of dispositions and sentencing for the commission of delinquent acts. Hmm. Wait, say that Interesting. again. Interesting. Okay. To lower the age of a person deemed to be a child for the purposes of dispositions me, and sentencing for the commission of de- me, delinquent I'm going to speak on this, too, because I don't think y'all are going to catch it. Most people want delinquent act is, is something only a juvenile can be prosecuted for, which is uh, what do you call it, playing hooky or not obeying your parents, whatever, or running away. You and I can't be arrested for running away. Yeah, uh, uh, but I think right now it's like twelve or thirteen, and they're gonna drop it down, or they're gonna try to drop it down probably to like nine or ten or something like that. Yeah, so basically, you'll be able to be prosecuted as an adult right. at a younger age. No, wait, wait, no I, right? The, the, um, no, the, no, you'll be able to be pros- prosecuted as a juvenile delinquent for whatever an age it is. Now they can't do shit to them. Oh, I and, see. And, well, okay. And, 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 and so they're going to be lowering like that. Little hug a thug, send it home, hug and, thug. And, and send them to the little psychiatrist and get a pat on the back or whatever the fuck till he turns 12 and kills somebody. All right. Well, there's a, there's a lot more of them. I'm not going to cover every single one of them, but I will mention one more. And, and this is the one probably making some of the biggest news out of this special session. And they are uh, – Governor Jeff Landry is proposing constitutional carry – where you do not have to have a permit to conceal love, a weapon. Love. Well, you know what? Yeah, it, to conceal it. Conceal it. So, so we have, and most people don't realize this, we have an open carry law. Yeah, you, but you, you can't can conceal carry, it. Can't conceal it. But I, I promise you this, you walk around with a pistol on and they don't see a badge, cops are going to get you. They're going to get you, meaning like, not that you're bad, but yeah. you, you're gonna get fucking harassed all day long. You can't, you can't go into Walmart and shit like that. Yeah, well, hey, I'm down with the concealed carry. Hey, make it, make it a fair fight. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So that's just some of the. There's actually uh, t- 24 of these the, different I, items just, that they want to cover at this session, and, and it's awesome. And they're gonna do that, and that this is where politics are gonna come into play because. Jeff Landry, the governor, has got to get X amount over on his side. Now, I think he's got a fair shot. It, it almost makes me want to come out of retirement and go back into law enforcement. But we shall see. Now, very, he, very can they do anything about uh, the federal government consent decree? Again, is it the only New Orleans that has a consent decree in, mm, in effect right it now? It comes in, comes in different jurisdictions after there's complaints like the – I don't know if they did it in Minneapolis, whatever. But what happened is some major incident will happen, and then the feds come in and be like, "Mm, your apartment's hooked up. You got too much of this or too much of that. Now we're going to put you under the federal judges is the one that that, that did it. We're putting you under this decree. You have to meet these mandates by such and such a year or whatever. You lose funding or the feds take it over. So that's that's different everywhere. But but. New Orleans is hamstrung by that thing, and yeah, they'll, yeah, yeah, but yeah, they'll never right. get they'll never get around it. No, because well, well, that's well, not that, necessarily true because the new governor, if he comes in and he's worked with, we actually had the DA in here uh, for New Orleans, and they discuss this a little bit. If if he can turn that department around by offering them certain things, like right. he's putting a. Uh, state police headquarters right there in the middle of a troop, a troop right there in the yeah. middle of the French quarter. Uh, the federal government is going to look at that and they they'll do away with that decree. If I think a lot of that was you had a democratic governor uh, uh, at that time who was not, who was not giving new Orleans not, anything right, they needed support. Yeah. Well, that's a, a, I mean, obviously you got people retiring and, and nobody wants to go where, your hands are tied as a cop and all that, but it's it's like the, let me take you back to the prisons. The um, 
in Louisiana prisons when when I was there, not in prison when I was working there. <laughs> the, uh, we we were under federal. The feds came in and were like, mm -mm, this is bullshit. Really? And you get a certain list of things that you got to fix to get out from underneath that. And believe me, they want from out from underneath it so they can be in control of their own destiny. Well, I think it's a really key time for the state. I was down in the uh, in the quarter on Friday with a bunch of you know locals who have done you know fifty Mardi Gras, and they said, look, because I'd never seen it like that in the in the three years I've been here. They said it's back. And, you know, everybody's looking at the Super Bowl mm -hmm. a year from yeah. now. Yeah. And if if they can deliver a great Super Bowl following a great Mardi Gras at like Jazz the Fest, then, then, you know, the tourism spigot opens back up and the convention business comes back in and, well, you know and a lot changes economically. Something might be happening because I, I didn't watch your local news, but I didn't hear about any mass shootings no, I didn't so either. far this week, but it didn't over till me. Well, I, I looked to see if they had a bunch of tomfoolery out there and I didn't see a whole I lot. I saw a bunch of two lane students pulled over with like four police cars right on Broadway this morning coming over. But, uh, so there's a little bit of trouble out there. Yeah. Well, well people get getting arrested in the doubt. Hey ladies, are you feeling overwhelmed by hormonal changes? Well, you're definitely not alone. There are more than 1,000 hormone disruptors living in our environment right now. It's sending your food, your water, the air you breathe, the clothes you wear, your skincare products. They all mess with your hormones. Then there's the natural hormone changes your body goes through. Premenopause, menopause. And while it's a natural process, it doesn't mean you have to suffer through it. The good news is... You don't have to suffer through it anymore because now you have Hormone Harmony, a formula made only with herbal ingredients that are shown to reduce hormonal symptoms in women of all ages. Hormone Harmony is not just a hormone supporting supplement. It's become a phenomenon. Women can't stop talking about it on social media. A bottle of Hormone Harmony is sold every 24 seconds. And the biggest benefit? Well, my wife says... It makes her feel like her own self again. And that's what women mention over and over in the reviews. And there are over 30,000 reviews for Hormone Harmony. And for a limited time, you can get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use code RLRC at checkout. That's happymammoth.com and use code RLRC for 15% off today. That's H-A-P-P-Y-M-A-M-M-O-T-H dot com and use code R-L-R-C. Hey, y'all. Let me tell you about Gobble. All Gobble Meal Kits are pre-prepped. That means less work for you and less waste in your kitchen. Their meal kits include everything you need so you can save time at the store or just skip that trip entirely. I got the box in and I had three different meals. I had Kung Pao chicken, crispy fish tacos, and a beef boom jignon. However you say it, but I'm going to tell you about the classic beef boom jignon. Look, it came with beef pot roast and a beef broth concentrate, red wine demi glaze, cremini mushrooms, siapelloni onions, mashed potatoes, baby carrots, and rosemary thyme butter. It was so easy to make. Literally like 15 minutes it took Cindy. And let me tell you something. And all the dishes were fire. But this thing was like a taste explosion in my mouth. It's just un real we've got to spend more time together and more time doing the things we love because everything came in this one single box right to my door so see what a difference gobble will make for your household right now they're all for my listeners a fantastic limited time deal you get a hundred and twenty dollars off across four boxes plus free shipping and free cookies. And let me tell you, those cookies, I ate one that was sin baked and it was delicious. Go to gobble.com slash real life. That's G-O-B-B-L-E dot com forward slash real life for $120 off your first four boxes. This offer is not available on the home site, so don't miss out. This is genius. It's taste explosions in your mouth like you never had. All right, let me take you to Florida, where a man was arrested after he attempted to snatch a four-year-old boy from inside a CVS pharmacy in Miami Beach on Thursday. Mm. You have been to Miami? 
I have not. I used to go down there a lot for work and spend like a lot of time. At, uh, South Beach. And independent consult. I actually stayed all over Miami. But you know what? Pretty cool place. Um, no, I, I didn't ever go cruise all those bars you and do, shit. But I went South to some fancy restaurants and stuff. No, uh, I love Key Biscayne, South Beach. So. I mean, there's but anyway, great for, people watching space. Back to spot, it. Jim. Yep. And so fortunately, the boy's quick thinking father came to the rescue and dragged the would-be kidnapper away. The frightening incident, which was captured on CCTV, took place around 11.55 a.m. when the boy and his parents were leaving the CVS pharmacy in the city's North Beach area. The brazen suspect, identified as 26-year-old Nicholas Sterneman, can be seen walking into the store before he suddenly turns around and bends down to grab the boy by the neck. Oh, right? God. Oh, somebody going to catch an ass whipping. Mm. The footage shows Sterneman lifting the child off the ground and turning to face the store's door to leave. When the father, yay, tackles the suspect and pulls Stern away from his son, the boy can be seen falling to the ground while his desperate mother races to her child's defense. I bet some mama bear is about to come out. The mother scoops up the boy and races him safely inside the store. As she does so, the boy's father wrestles with Sternman for several seconds and even rips off Sternman's j- jacket. A witness and the father... Then chased Sternman down Collins Avenue, and police officers uh, joined in the pursuit also, and they got his ass. And then he is in prison. Miami's Channel 10 reported Sternman refused to explain to the police why he tried to duck the kid. Imagine that, right? So good for the dad, because you know what he's going to do, right? It's definitely rape, rape and, and murder that kid coming. You don't grab a kid by the neck. And talk about how desperate and ballsy, right? The parents are there Just, in a fucking CVS. Well, you know, the uh, motherfucker better be glad it wasn't my kid. You ain't lying. Yeah, well, yeah, I wouldn't have to chase him down. The bullets would have done it for me. So, yeah, that's that is uh, that's some ballsy shit. He'd be dead, dead as hell or whatever Mike says. Yes. <laughs> Killed him like fried Killed chicken. Killed him good. Killed him good, <laughs> Killed him good in the like CVS. Fried chicken. Yeah. Well, anyway, good for them for. Standing up. Let's go back to my home. Long Island, New York. I love high school basketball games. You guys love high school basketball games? You ever do when high I school basketball play, games? I haven't been to one since. I know your son was on the championship team last year, right? The last two years. Uh, you but, go. you know, the traditions, the rivalries, the competition, the school spirit, all of it on display. High school basketball is great. Some say the enthusiasm just isn't what it used to be in high school sports, but not on my native Long Island, where the rivalries are as hotly contested as ever and the battles in the stands can be as physical as those on the court. An enthusiastic mother and daughter pair were exercising their First Amendment rights loudly during a game Thursday night between Oyster Bay High School and Locust Valley High. The pair from Oyster Bay were a bit too loud and aggressive for one of the Locust Valley parents, and that's when things went bad. The Oyster Bay pair were Kimberly and Gianna Gotti, the wife and daughter of John Gotti Jr., Mm -hmm. the namesake son of the notorious and alleged former head of the Gambino crime family, John Gotti. Alleged. Alleged. (laughs) (laughs) Kimberly Gotti, 55, and her daughter Gianna, who's only 25, are now facing assault charges stemming from a fist fight with a woman at this game on Long Island after the woman asked them to stop cursing at players from the bleachers. She should have said please. John and Kimberly Gotti's son, Joseph, was on the court playing for Oyster Bay High against Locust Valley. The woman said Kimberly and Gianna punched her and pulled off her hat and wig quote, which were held on by three clips and Velcro. The woman said she, quote, felt as if my scalp was going to be ripped off and described how additional people joined in and knocked her to the ground. The Gottis, who were each charged Friday morning with third-degree assault, disputed the woman's account. John Gotti Jr. told reporters on Thursday the woman assaulted his wife first. That's the only reason why we're here. She threw a punch and hit my wife in the head. Kimberly and Gianna Gotti are both scheduled to appear in Nassau District Court again on March 6th. Some un, uh, unfairly speculated that, quote, this is the kind of thing that could leave someone wearing a pair of cement Jordans. 
just another gratuitous racial joke at the expense of my people. But allegedly, the gaudy ladies had shouted some rude words to the woman's teen son during the game. Allegedly, the woman then began shouting insults at young Joseph Gotti, who was playing for Oyster Bay. Back home, we call that a career-limiting maneuver, or a CLM. Both Kimberly, 55, and Gianna, 23, then allegedly lunged at the woman, pummeled her, pulling her hair, and at one point allegedly called the other team's players, quote, (laughs) sources said. Mm. I doubt the Gottis are actually capable of that kind of language. The he, victim suffered substantial pain to her scalp and bruises <laughs> yeah. to both sides of her face, according to Nassau County Police. The judge in the case charged the mother, daughter crew with third degree assault. The judge also issued an order of protection meant to keep the alleged infamous mob family members away from the victim in this case, who has not been named, will never be named, and has already changed her name. The Gotti's attorney, Gerald Michael Matone, blamed the blow up on the other parent, telling the New York Post that the woman threw the first punch and had been badgering Kimberly's youngest son. He also denied his client's use of the homophobic slur. They were making fun as he was playing, and then there was a little bit of a verbal thing, but that's it. And this victim actually punched Mrs. Gotti. She threw the first punch. So the Gotti's don't press charges. The next court date is March 6th. Current odds are at 250 to 1 against the alleged victim showing up for that court date. Looks like the gaudy bloodline don't play, huh? Well, that uh, the daughter, Gianna, is actually a professional basketball player in Portugal. Really? Yeah. I didn't she's, know that. Yeah, wow. She's, uh, hmm. she's good. And she's, uh, uh, by, all, by all counts, I, I don't think these you know why? this family is involved in any of that. Other she's stuff a professional basketball that player. was alleged. Because nobody can defend her. You know why? She's Teflon. <laughs> oh, she might have She might have inherited you, a little bit right of off Teflon. The top. Right off the top. I don't know how good the youngest one is. All right. Well, let's I get bet there in the garbage business. So. <laughs> sanitation. Yeah, sorry, sanitation. Sanitation engineer. Let's go back to Louisiana. And uh, where in Louisiana, Jim? Talk Chapman. about we're going into Homa. Oh, down south. Where the Indians, Homa Indian yeah, tribes. Homa Indian tribes are there, and, and someone else very famous is there. And look, before we get into this story, I, I'm going to say this. I know this guy personally. This guy's done my podcast. Uh, and he is about one of the most humble individuals you ever meet. So I'm going to read you a little bit. Of, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you the article that came out on him, and then I'm going to read you his response, and, uh, and we'll comment on it. But uh, – the Cajun Ninja, Grand Marshal of the yeah. crew of Mardi Gras, left wow. off his float and awesome. got into an argument with a member of the crowd. A parade goer shouted shouted expletives and, cho- and told Jason to ruin a popular internet personality known for videos of cooking on social media under the name Cajun Ninja that he couldn't cook. When asked about it, uh, Duplantis said, because I said he wasn't a real cook. That's why he jumped off the float. The internet personality jumped off the vo- the float, and another crowd member who would not give his name held the two men apart. Members of the Terrebonne Parish Sheriff's Office got involved, and the internet star got back on the float. The parade was at a stop while the royalty was toasting, and a short time later, Duran's wife, Misty, gave Duplantis the middle finger. Deputies told her to stop, and she responded, what? They can do it to us, and we can't? The deputy again told her to stop, and she said, that's okay. I'll tell Joe Watts. Joe Watts is the Terrebonne Parish District Attorney. Eddie Reyes was standing near Duplantis when Deruin leapt from the float. He said he wasn't a fan of Deruin's cooking, but that Duplantis' heckling was excessive. He kept yelling, fuck you, fuck you, Reyes said. The old man kept talking shit, and that's not right. Question about the incident, Terrebonne Parish Sheriff Tim uh, Sorgne, who was writing about two blocks ahead of the Grand Marshal's float, said he would collect the reports from his deputies and decide what actions to take. So uh, the ninja responded to that, and his response, which he put on Facebook, was, I should have never jumped off the float. 
I take full responsibility for my actions. It was a lapse in judgment on my part. Contrary to popular belief, I didn't jump off because someone said he isn't a real cook. I've been told things like this since I started making videos. Most of you who truly know me know I do not consider myself some gift to Cajun cooking. I'm just another guy cooking in Louisiana who happens to film the process. There are many, many people who can do it better than me. I'm completely okay with this. I also did not jump for what was actually initially said to me, which was, fuck you, fake Cajun ass. Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> then followed by several FUs, middle fingers, and you can't fucking cook. This was completely unprovoked. But then again, that didn't bother me. I actually smirked at the level someone would go to make a guy to make a guy mad over cooking videos. It started to escalate when the person would not stop. Then they continued to my wife's side of the float, pointing at my wife and saying, and fuck you too, bitch. Yeah, I got off then too. A few more F you fucking bitch. And it was then that I had the lapse in judgment. It was irresponsible for me to do such a thing. There is never a moment in time where it's a good idea to jump off the float. So despite what was said to my wife and I, there's no excuse. And I should have shown better restraint. My apologies go out to the people who witnessed this, the law enforcement who had to get involved. And to tell all of you, I definitely learned something. Uh, and I will ha- be better at handling situations like this moving forward. Uh, so my question is, and you kind of just answered it, you know, was he justified in doing that? Yeah, it'd be, you know, when they take it to your family members, like I've been a grand marshal praise for just like this. I don't give a shit what they say to me, right? Um, and you're always going to have the haters out there. You know, you put their family members in jail or whatever. I, you know, the Cajun never, Ninja did to these people. But they're probably trying to film it and do whatever. When you take it to your family members, you can go fuck yourself. I'm getting off the float seat. That's right. Um, I, and whoever says he that. can't cook has never made his, his gumbo. Amen to that. <laughs> was, was he the king of that? Yes, he, he was. was a grand and, look, <laughs> Cajun Ninja, what a lot of people don't know about that guy, in addition to being a great cook, in my opinion, uh, oh, and a lot of other people's, he's, he's got great, two million great, Facebook followers, literally. Um, in addition to being all of that, he is a third degree black belt in Taekwondo. Right. And also, he is, I think he's a brown belt. I, I could be wrong on that. In Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Uh, he probably would have killed that guy in two seconds. I wonder if people if thought it was to. a setup. You think people thought, uh, you know, it was because th- that had to be, I, I got to go back and watch it, but that had to look like something that was, I mean, when do you see the king of a parade jump off? Yeah. To get well, to, I mean, when I, when I was the king or in the grand marshal, the same thing, like he was in this one, the, um, I had my, yeah, you know, I was in the, in the very first vehicle, but the float behind me was my family and all my friends, right? And if someone had done that to them, then I probably would have lost my Jesus too, and done whatever. Yeah, I don't it, think it's a setup when you got a million people there watching. But the Cajun Ninja doesn't need any more publicity than the fact that I'm going to tell you this: go look up his how to cook a original roux. That's it. Oh, yeah. the, the gumbo is part of it, oh, yeah. but his his how to do the original roux. I've taught that we'll every, every, we'll everywhere from French. all the way up to Wisconsin. They make a gumbo when it gets cold up there, but they stir in that roux for about two hours. So he's pretty modest about. Oh, he is, where he and in person, stands. if you met good, him, good you dude. would know there's no way he would have done that unprovoked, and, and it would have had to been a lot of pro- provocation. Yeah, for well, him well it probably worked out well for him because he probably got millions of uh, of views off. Of yeah, that. well, y'all, we're gonna get Mike to jump off a float. Next I will. Year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Real, backwards. Hey, backwards. we're gonna take it, flip. take it serious, serious, serious down the night, and might be. be this is real life, real crime. We do a lot of joking. We do a lot of, you know, segments and all this stuff. And the story is probably one of the most disturbing things you're ever going to hear on this show. And I don't know that we've ever done one more dis- disturbing. So a mother has been charged with a felony after she put her one month old baby down for a nap in an oven. Oh my God. The baby later died. 
The woman Ugh. identified as Kansas City, Missouri resident what? Maria Thomas put her newborn baby daughter in an oven earlier this week. That's what the Jackson County prosecutor said. Police found the child on Friday after responding to a 911 call that reported a non-breathing infant. Upon the arrival, officers discovered the baby with apparent burns. Authorities were told that Thomas was putting the child down for a nap and accidentally placed the child in the oven instead of the crib. That's what the prosecutor said. Kansas City Fire Department, which also responded to the scene of the alleged cr- of the crime, not alleged, fuck her, declared the baby dead at the scene. The criminal complaint states the one-month-old was found in the living room lying in a car seat just inside the front door and had to s- sustain apparent thermal injuries on various parts of her body. <sighs> she was clothed in a bodysuit over a diaper. The clothing appeared to have melted onto the diaper. And it was very dirty, possibly burned on the backside. A baby blanket with significant burn marks was also found on the property and collected by police. Police reported that the baby's grandfather returned home and could smell smoke in the home. He looked for the source of smoke, and that's when he found the baby dead in her crib, and the grandfather called 911. He questioned his daughter as to what to happen, and Thomas then said she accidentally put her in the oven. Thomas now faces the fuckers. She's you know she she's getting ten years to to life. Yeah. Ten she, years of life. She needs to. Yeah, she needs. Uh, they need to put her ass in the oven. Yeah. There you go. No Real talk about crime. her being on some kind of crazy it, drugs it, it, or anything. It, it, it would make a fuck if she was. No, she no. put her baby in the oven. God. And, and no excuse for that. Mm-mm. I don't care what you s- smoked or. Well, whatever. and also, if somehow you were crazy enough to accidentally put your child in the oven, you, you wouldn't she, hide it you, later well, on. Well, she must have turned the oven on. She still turned the oven on. Because yeah, the child yeah. wouldn't have been burned if they right. were in right. an oven that wasn't turned on. I mean, yep. Wow. Real life. Where was that? That was Kansas City. Yep. Real life, real crime, y'all. And uh, justice needs to be served. Mm. Okay, let's um, let's go to. I don't know if you guys caught any of this, but uh, Jeffrey Epstein's brother, Mark Epstein, has gotten very involved in what is going on continues to go on involving exactly how Jeffrey Epstein died. So, you know, one of the most prominent present day conspiracy theories involves the death of billionaire pedophile Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein was found dead on August 10th, 2019 in his prison cell at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in New York. He'd been arrested in July of 2019 on federal sex trafficking and conspiracy charges. New York City's uh, chief medical examiner, Barbara Sampson, conducted a four-hour autopsy on Jeffrey's body on August 11th. The initial autopsy did not conclusively identify a cause of death. The official language would later be altered to read apparent suicide as cause of death. Epstein's brother, Mark, became skeptical of the ME's ruling almost immediately, and he is now leading an effort to conclusively determine his brother's cause of death. Mark Epstein appeared with Megyn Kelly on her Sirius XM show last week and summarized his suspicions. He said that he and Jeffrey's attorney requested former New York City uh, medical examiner Michael Baden, I think it's Baden, Baden. Uh, be present at the autopsy, and that Baden said they could not call this a suicide because it looked too much like a homicide. Mark said he learned of his brother's passing from the media, and he initially was inclined to believe the speculation that his brother had died by suicide, but things started to change as he learned more about the circumstances surrounding Jeffrey's death and what the medical examiner was and was not able to determine. So then the questions became, if he didn't commit suicide and he was killed, well, who killed him and how was it done? And so a Justice Department Inspector General report released last summer, you guys probably remember this coming out in the summer, detailed a number of failures at that correctional center, including faulty cameras, understaffing, structural problems, falsified documents, and more. All this occurred right before and right after Jeffrey's death. However, even with those failures, the 128-page report concluded the disgraced financier hanged himself in his jail cell with an orange noose he fashioned from, quote, a sheet or a shirt. 
The report concluded that there was no foul play involved. Mark Epstein provided Megyn Kelly with autopsy photos of his brother that have never been seen in public. Um, And he's using those photos to challenge some of this official narrative. Mark used the autopsy photos uh, to uh, challenge the suicide conclusion. One of the photos displayed a significant red mark around the middle of Epstein's neck, while another depicted his legs, which Mark suggested showed clear signs of blood pooling. He contended that the condition of Epstein's legs contradicted the expected outcomes of a hanging death. Mark said that when Jeffrey was found unresponsive by the prison guards, he had been dead for at least two hours. Quote, we know that from the autopsy results because of the mark that was left on the neck. For that mark to have been embedded in his neck that way and dry like that, he had to be dead for at least two hours. It could have been as much as six hours, but a minimum of two nonetheless. I have a hard time as a layperson understanding how a sheet made that mark, Megyn Kelly said. She also said it's almost like a garret was used or some sort of rope wire. We have that picture. Um, I don't know if you've uh, you've seen it, Woody. Okay, because I'm really interested to get your opinion on this. The fact that his legs are clear, even if they had laid him down, the blood would not have drained up from his legs into his back unless he was hung upside down. This is according to Mark. The fact that his legs and buttocks are clear from lividity, it leads doubt to the fact that he was found the way they described. Mark is saying this is bullshit. There were 11 other prisoners on that tier in the cells that, and any one of them could have killed him. Mark noted that the doctors who performed the autopsy said the, said the marking looked more like a, quote, ligature strangulation, which typically occurs, quote, when you go behind and pull something tight around someone's neck. If you read the Justice Department report, it describes the way Jeffrey was allegedly found hanging. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but it's really weird. They said that he was in a seated position with his legs extended out in front of him, and he was hanged by the thing around his neck from the top bunk with his buttocks about an inch above, uh, an inch or an inch and a half above the ground. So, like, in... Uh, a seating like position, except not seating with his legs out in front. You ever heard of, you have I've okay, seen so, it. I've seen it. Okay. So, um, uh, do you have any thoughts yet? What do you want me to keep I going? Do you can keep going. I got a lot of thoughts. Okay. okay. Um, this is not in line with the markings in the photo. Mark said, if you look at the picture, the ligature mark is more in the middle of his neck and, uh, uh, and goes straight back in a hanging it goes really high up on the front of your neck because you sink down into the noose or whatever uh, was used. This is why Mark does not believe Jeffrey died from hanging the way that they say. And when you combine this visual evidence with the various departmental failures documented in the DOJ report, there's lots of reasons to question the suicide conclusion. We learned that video surveillance of the small cell block where Epstein was housed was broken. So there is no video view of the area during the time of his death. We do know that the cameras on the other side of that cell block were operable, so we have evidence of who entered and when they entered. From those cameras, we learn about two guards who did not conduct the rounds they were supposed to conduct that night. We also learned of two unidentified guards in the area that night. Why can't they identify those guards? Mark's theory is that his brother's cell and at least one other cell in that block could have been left open uh, that night and someone could have come for Epstein and murdered him. Mark is not saying that it is that that's conclusively what happened, but he's trying to raise awareness about the case, believing the answers are out there somewhere. So All right. you- where to begin? Um, I personally, and this is my personal opinion, not based off all that, the how and the fuck do you let your most high profile inmate hang himself? Well, you know what? You want to hang yourself, you're going to hang yourself. The I, Me personally, I think everything is suspect, blah, 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 but I'm not a conspiracy guy. Now, as far as uh, lifting your buttocks off the floor and hanging yourself, I've seen it. It doesn't take much to hang yourself. I've had it, people hang themselves from, from everything from a little bitty kite string that ties up sheet bundles to, to shirts and everything else. Um, the lividity... That's um, oftentimes misused 
term. Let's say it was two hours or six hours. Your body goes through like three different stages, if I'm not incorrect on that, right? And so the it gets hard then in, in the blood pools, and but you can turn them over for whatever reason, and then the blood will shift, and, and they will come in and work the crime scene and whatever. This, that, that, that's bullshit. I mean, that could be one way or the other. The camera being out, typical, not knowing who the other guards were, I mean, as a conspiracy theory, but the main thing is this. What people would need to understand is, let's say 11-person cell block. That cell block is for the people who need protecting or or locked down on, on CCR for whatever reason. And the, you know, the people not making rounds, hell, you're supposed to make rounds every 15 minutes. Swim didn't do it back in his day. But I made sure when I did make the rounds that the doors were locked. You're going to walk that tier. You can pull every doorknob or door, every door handle to make sure they're locked. And no, you can't just – it's like getting out a pair of handcuffs. It's total bullshit. It's just – you just don't – it doesn't happen. Um, if the – Cell doors were left unlocked from the control center. There's a record in it every time they're open and unopened. I get it. It's a conspiracy theory. I personally, for whatever reason, I mean, just I don't understand how you let your most high-profile inmate that you ever had hang himself. But as far as factual enough to charge someone other than what they've already said, that, you know, but that could have been any prison and anybody that, non-famous hung themselves that they actually went in and did this big investigation. They're going to find all this shit like people not making rounds and this didn't work and whatever. I don't know. So so your gut is? My gut would be the without looking at evidence, just listening to it and talking to some people who talked to over 40 victims uh, um, and all that. My, my gut would be, yeah, it's certainly suspicious. and But you know, bringing in uh, Dr. Biden and and doing a four hour autopsy after it's already been done, and I mean, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I don't see how that happens. But I also think Jeffrey Epstein's a little bitch, and he knew he was going to do life or whatever. So was, I'm fifty fifty. More than likely, he he killed himself. Jim, any thoughts? I, I'm I'm a little more towards he didn't kill himself, but uh, I don't have Woody's expertise on that. I mean, we we recognize there are a lot of powerful people he stood to cause yep. some damage. So there are yep. there certainly are reasons for people to be suspicious, and and when you uh, when you add to it all the things that went wrong from an execution yep. standpoint, within it, it what, just they, let me ask this: How come they hadn't killed that chick yet? The one who set all the, the fucking Jelaine, up. Jelaine Maxwell. Set all the fucking up and the rapes and all the people flying back and forth on the airplane. And, oh, no. Yeah, exactly. All right. Spark something uncommon this holiday with just the right gift from Uncommon Goods. The busy holiday season is here, and Uncommon Goods makes it less stressful with incredible hand-picked gifts for everyone on your list, all in one spot. Gifts to spark joy, wonder, delight, and that's exactly what I want it feeling. Hey, y'all, I ordered a super cool piece. It's a candle with a sculpture of an LSU Tiger Stadium on top of it. And each officially licensed laser-cut wooden replica features up to four layers of detail, creating a bird's-eye view of a specific football field, seating section, and more. And every label includes your stadium's name, the team's logo, and school location. And it has a coconut soy vegan wax infused with sandalwood smell that creates tailgates and touchdowns scent profile, reminiscent of game day. It's invigorating like fresh-cut grass and nostalgic like smoke from a pre-game grill. And calming like the crisp autumn air of a new semester on campus. Y'all, I love it. I have it at the base of my TV, and I'm ready to watch the Tigers play on Saturday night, right? Uncommon Goods. Look, when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. And many of their handcrafted products are made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S. They have the most meaningful 
out of the ordinary gifts anywhere. They even have gifts you can personalize. From holiday hosts and hostess gifts to the coolest finds for kids to hits for everyone from the book lovers to diehard sports fans. Uncommon Goods has something for everyone, not the same old selection you can just find anywhere. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $3 million to date. So to get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C. That's uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limit time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. Good point. Good, 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 good story. All right. Oh. Mile high crime for Wednesday, and we're leaving the United States, y'all. And we're oh, Jim's getting on a plane. We're going. We're going overseas. A man was charged in federal court last week after causing a ruckus for several hours on an international flight to Salt Lake City, and even spitting on fellow passengers. Law enforcement at the Salt Lake City International Airport said they were alert, alerted to an incoming flight from Amsterdam. How about that? Anybody ever been to Amsterdam? I've been to Amsterdam. I love Amsterdam. Mike, you been there? Sure. Fun? Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I wasn't there uh, to party. I was there on business, but it, yeah. It's, you. What yeah, they it's call worth a, seeing. What do they call a quarter pounder in Amsterdam? <laughs> <laughs> right. Royale. Every Royale time I see yeah. Amsterdam, that's what I think of. I think about this where I see You Pulp Fiction there. folks, you know what I'm getting at. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, he was uh, en route to Salt Lake City, that flight, when a man's action caused a disturbance for several hours, concluding with him being restrained on board the plane. A passenger told police the man identified as 19-year-old Darnell Collins started causing a commotion just one hour into the 10-hour flight. He was loud and disruptive and was tapping on other passengers. Collins, who is a Netherlands citizen and resident of Arizona, reportedly escalated his behavior and began following a female passenger around. The passenger kept asking the flight attendant for help and ultimately pushed him away after he kept touching her. Witnesses said Collins then grabbed a woman's arm as she exited the bathroom and he wouldn't let go until others intervened. Flight attendants then moved at least eight passengers to different seats so he wouldn't disturb him, but he turned around in his seat and kept talking to the other passengers until it became aggressive. One of the flight attendants said they feared a physical altercation might happen, so he was moved to the very back of the plane, and other passengers in that area were moved. Still, he kept touching people as they walked past and even touched passengers two rows ahead of them. Ahead of him, according to police, Collins then spit on a passenger, and <laughs> that would have been it right there, right. bro. And at least two people were hit with his spit. He also reportedly called one flight attendant uh, a B-word. Due to the continued disturbance, the flight crew restrained him with flexicuffs. These flexicuffs are getting popular on. in these stories. These are single-use handcuffs that are similar to zip ties. But he still kept unbuckling his seatbelt and standing up, so he's eventually restrained with multiple multiple seatbelt extenders wrapped around his body for at least two hours of the flight. Constable. Oh, my gosh. Police said Collins' action prevented the flight crew from performing their usual duties during the flight because someone had to cons- constantly watch over him. Collins was charged by the U.S. Attorney's Office with assault as well as interference with the flight crew and is being held at the Salt Lake County Jail. Uh, look, I'm, if I'm on a 10-hour flight, I don't have to deal with bullshit. Exactly, right? It's Sit in your spitting, seat. You spit on me. No, no, oh, bro. No, no, no. Yeah, that's I, 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 I'd, I'd rather you bad kick, kick as me in the nuts get. and spit in spit I heard uh, Spirits offering a new uh, <laughs> level of service where they flexi-cuff every passenger. Have you heard <laughs> yeah, that? Right? No, the, the, it's uh, only like $19 the, to go to New York on that. Right? Right? The Spirits will do that. Ooh, yeah. kinky crimes kinky for Valentine's, Valentine's, Valentine's Day, kinky. Day, right? That's this pressure. Uh, don't worry. It's got to be a good one. Fans, lifers, don't worry. Woody Overton <laughs> is safe from kinky crimes on Valentine's Day. <laughs> All right, so let's go to Australia. 
Down right? under. Down under, literally. An Aussie bloke whose experiment was with Super Viagra ended with him <laughs> accidentally Viagra. flashing a teenage fast food worker has been shown mercy by a judge. Judge Teresa Austin accepted David Bruce Richardson's eye-watering account of his Viagra overdose and found there had been no sexual intent when the Darwin man accidentally exposed his privates to a 16-year-old girl working in a drive-thru. <laughs> yeah, right. The young woman was said to be traumatized and reduced to tears. Oh, Lord. Um, Mr. Richardson's ill-fated Hungry Jack's run last September took place a day after he took a sexual enhancement drug called Pitbull Super. Oh, yeah. Prior, oh prior, prior to – wait, work. wait. Why did he take it? Because he was going to attend an orgy with friends at a local hotel. Oh, there you go. Uh, while Pitbull, no better reason. Exactly. While Pitbull <laughs> Super is advertised as natural formula, it in fact contains the prescription-only drug – uh, that's in Viagra and Seattle shell, which are used to treat everybody knows what the fuck that's for. As a result, the taking of the pill, Mr. Richardson's erection would not subside, and became extremely painful. He oh was my God. he was with a number of young ladies and they were having relations, and he says <laughs> that his erection would not cease and it became extremely painful. The lawyer said Richardson started to panic and the side of his penis began to split because of the lack ah! of circulation on there. Richardson then drove home, grabbed a towel, but said he couldn't touch his penis because it felt like it was about to explode. But he pulled it, he had time, right, to pull in the Hungry Jacks, and he purchased some food. <laughs> there was a towel he said he didn't get out of the car. He was embarrassed. That's what the lawyer said. Fucking liar. Um, and said a remorseful Mr. Richardson admitted he had made a mistake and honestly didn't think the Hungry Jacks workers would see him. I wasn't trying to expose myself to the poor young girl, he said. The appeal was way too strong. I'm surprised it's illegal, it's illegal to sell that stuff. I was in a lot of pain. I wasn't trying to flash myself anymore. I just wanted to grab a feed and go home. Mr. Rich said he had, he had had to take several days to rest after the effects of Super Viagra were all whatever. Uh, Pit Bull Super. The, mm, the judge basically said that um, – the packet of pit bull super looked dangerous, but said Miss Rich should have gone to the hospital instead of a drive through. I agree. <laughs> she handed Miss Rich a nine month good behavior bond after finding he had no sexual intent. Whatever, fuck. I mean, come on, pit man. bull super, pit bull Look, super. I have heard that that uh, you know you go to the truck stops and stuff, and in the bathrooms they'll you put the money in. I guess you get a packet of whatever it is. I had heard that some of, I always thought that stuff wasn't legit, but uh, I've heard they, that, they, they, that I know some of that's legit I know for shit. a fact that some of it's legit because through friends, they get, they order it off the internet and it's called like gold and honey or some shit like that. But you, <laughs> in the back, it's got Arabic writing and you look, you look <laughs> it up and the, it's, it, it's, it idea. has honey in it, but the yeah. main ingredients is shit, same shit they put in the dick pills. <laughs> yeah. So it's not there even, you so go. you look it up on the FDA websites and they're like, mm, it's illegal, but we're just not really enforcing it because we don't have enough people to enforce right. it. Right. Well, so, yeah, there's your kinky crimes for Valentine's. Maybe you all, y'all get, soup. maybe y'all all get some pip. Pitbull. Oh, that might be Mike's, got, that might Mike's be, getting bring him one home. That might be cheaper than my Tadalafil, it sounds like, since it's uh, <laughs> since know. it can just buy it over the counter. Pitbull Super. Pitbull. I need super. the Brussels Griffon Super though. I don't. <laughs> <There you laughs> go. I don't need that Pitbull. Super. Happy Valentine's. Kinky crimes yeah. for Valentine's. Don't criminals. Well, I have a Valentine's special dumb criminals it was valentine's day in the year 2010 and to say 38 year old stacy shoke was not in a romantic mood would be an understatement All right. richard shoke was stacy's fifth husband who had gladly adopted her three kids when they married three years earlier richard was anxious to find out why his wife had invited him to meet her at belton bridge park in hall county georgia for a special Valentine's Day treat. It wasn't just Valentine's Day. It was also the couple's third wedding anniversary. So Richard was especially excited. While Richard had romance on his mind, Stacy had something very, very different on hers. Namely, Richard's $500,000 life insurance policy. Mm. 
Stacy worked in administration at the DeKalb Spinal Clinic. Lenitra Ross was Stacy's friend at the clinic. Stacy shared with Lenitra that she had grown tired of husband number five and had been having an affair. She asked her coworker friend for some advice on getting rid of her husband. Lenitra said she knew just the guy for the job. His name was Reginald Coleman. Coleman was a personal trainer by day, but on weekends and evenings, he ran another business called Mr. Results. Mm. <laughs> Mr. Results promised results for the fair asking price of $10,000. Add a little finder's fee for Lenitra, and Valentine's Day was looking very profitable for Stacy Shoke. Everything was set. Richard showed up for his evening of romance, and instead of Stacy meeting him at the park in warm embrace, he was instead greeted by Reginald Coleman, a.k.a. Mr. Results, and his handgun. Gunned down on his third anniversary by a small-time hitman hired by a cheating wife. Stacy now waited for her $500,000 life insurance payout. The insurance company was a little bit skeptical of a man being gunned down in a remote park holding flowers and a Valentine's Day card, so they decided to do a little investigating before releasing those funds. Right. And what do you know? Our fifth time wasn't the charm mastermind of the murder of her fifth husband and adopted father of her children had communicated all of the particulars with her co-conspirators before, during, and after the hit over her company email and on her phone. Ugh. She never saw the $500,000. Lenitra Ross never admitted her role in the killing, but she was sentenced to life in prison. Reginald Coleman pleaded guilty, and he was also sentenced to life in prison. And Stacey Shoke was tried and found guilty and was sentenced to life in prison. She's presently shopping for husband number six online and listens exclusively to banjo music. Happy fucking Valentine's Day. <laughs> Happy BD. Right? You believe that Man, one? Yeah. Paper she record called, fifth husband? Should have called Guido. I wonder if she knocked off... Uh, some of those first four. Wow. Really hit me. Woody, any final thoughts? Uh, I got none. <laughs> Restaurants, <laughs> flout florists, candy makers, card makers. Y'all enjoy your most profitable Champagne, day a little champagne. Mm, oh, champagne gives me a headache. It's <laughs> all about, about Woody. Um, <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> Mike might uh, bring Will Champagne home tonight, along with yeah, yeah. Right. some yeah, other not knocking, you, Bobby. not knocking that you boys got to be succumb to the man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing, y'all. I, hey, I'm sure there's a hopeless romantic in me somewhere. Y'all put it in your calendars. The three of us are going up to Parish Forensics on yes. March 21st. Yes, we're going to yes. do the show from up there. Yes, got a um, busy month. March 1st, corner. Lopa speaking March 13th, 14th. Louisiana Probation and Parole up in North Louisiana. And then on the 20, what is it when we're going to Paris? 21st. 21st. I can't wait for that. Yeah, then we on should. the 27th, I'm speaking at the. It's oh, I saw that. Congratulations. Yeah. Mm, if you're in the yeah. Livingston Parish, Baton Rouge area. Tickets yeah, yeah. online. Yeah, Check yeah, them yeah. out. Yeah. Well, we're each going to have a scalpel in our hand and a cadaver in front of us you know, I've done to do some work on during that episode. It, it ain't going to uh, bother me, but I can't wait to see you two boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, help me. Roy, help uh, me. Yeah. yeah. Roy's going to give me some help. Roy and Kristen's the best. Paris Friends of Shaw, they rock. We are going to be doing a show from there. Um, and So I hope we can video to it, huh, Jim? And, and get Roy and Kristen's on video? Sure. Yeah. So anyway, thank you all. And we love and appreciate each and every one of you. You rock. Happy, Happy Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. Until next time, I'm Jim Chapman. I'm Woody Everton. And I'm Mike Agavino. Your host of Real Life, Real Crime Daily. Peace. Peace. Glad.